Hey guys, what's up? Sando here. Another day, another duck review. Many of you requested for a Gustard A18 duck test and I'm glad to tell you that it's finally ready. It has more or less the same electronics with its much bigger brother A22, but at only half its price, uh, its value is undeniably very, very high. Full disclosure first, I've received this one directly from Apos Audio, but you have my word that this will be an unbiased and an honest review. It goes for uh, 559 bucks and let's see how it performs. First of all, it's a fully CNC machined aluminum device from a single block of aluminum with just a thick front and back plate attached to it. There isn't a single visible screw on this one, only on this back plate. It's painted in matte black and you can have it in matte silver as well. It looks really simple, but it's built to very high standards. I'm glad to see the best aluminum fit in the business. Gustart didn't spare a dime building the case of A18. It simply screams high quality from any point of view. At about 2.5 kilos or 5.5 pounds, it's considerably heavier than its competition like the Topping D90 and SMSL M400, but I have a bigger confidence in heavier devices as if we are talking about DAX, a heavy unit equals with a nice linear power supply with a big capacitance for power storing and filtering. As for controls, A18 has a clean front panel with just a simple monochrome OLED screen in the middle and a really nice volume wheel on the far right. In the middle of that wheel a button can be spotted, a short press on it will select the desired digital input and a long press will engage the user menu where additional settings can be found. On the back you can spot a wide variety of digital inputs as USB, I2S, Coaxial and AAC. It's a fully balanced DAC so it offers XLR and RCA outputs, a voltage switch, there is also a Bluetooth antenna socket, an AC inlet and also an on-off switch. The only thing that is missing from its bigger brother A22 is the optical input. As for the tech inside it, I was a little bit shocked of how much technology was moved from the flagship A22 DAC to the A18 DAC, yet slashing its price in half. Take the DAC chip for example, it's exactly the same flagship AK4499 from AKM. The only thing that was changed is that A18 uses a single one instead of two on the A22. The most important changes can be found at the current to voltage conversion and in the low pass filter. Instead of using a very expensive all discrete circuitry with tens of transistors, all working in class A, for the smaller Gustart that discrete circuitry was exchanged with a dozen of LME49 860 op amps. A linear and regulated transformer will be doing all the cleaning service, four voltage regulators will be taking that power and will be lowering the noise floor even more. Gustart used the most advanced Bluetooth chipset on the market, the notorious CSR 8675, that supports all the best Bluetooth codecs as LDAC and aptX HD. Add the latest version 5.0 plus an antenna that works as a signal booster, and you can be sure that the Bluetooth signal will be strong and will be covering a wider area. In terms of sound performance, when I was testing that top Gustard A22 DAC, it sounded nothing like the rest of the AKM flagship devices. So instead of going with the safe route by offering a warmer mid-range, uh, a denser tone in the mid-range, a little bit of uh, treble roll-off, uh, A22 was considerably more linear top to bottom, so the mid-range was more linear, uh, treble was more extended, uh, co considerably more extended, let's say so. The transparency of that unit and the speed and impact of that unit resembled a lot more the performance of my own uh, Matrix Audio Element X, which is still my benchmark when it comes to oversampling and Delta Sigma DAX. So I cannot go forward without saying how much close this one is sounding to the A22 and basically even to my own Matrix Audio Element X. I'm again spotting that lightning fast uh, bass performance, that natural mid-range, without going overboard to the smooth and warm camp. Uh, treble can be considered extended but without any signs of digitals. So uh, all my past experiences with this chipset were quite different and by that I want to tell you that Gustard simply knows the limitations of this chipset and they are trying to fight back some of its uh, flaws, some of its cones. So the discrete output stage of the Gustard A22 was replaced by LME op amps in this one, which are one of the most transparent sounding and one of the most linear sounding op amps in the business. 
And I think that uh, the marriage between those uh, flagship AKM chipsets that is very strong in the mid-range, but weak in the top octave with these LMEO pumps, which are very extended and linear sounding, is making basically A18 a very musical creature, but also a very transparent sounding unit. In terms of background noise, I'm not really sure why Gustart is still not publishing their own measurements in terms of noise floor, because after listening to this one, uh, that was connected to the Benchmark HP for driving some very sensitive IMs. It was very clear to me that I am dealing simply with an inaudible noise floor at any volume position. Few microvolts of noise is still inaudible for our hearing. And I was not surprised at all to hear simply a dead silent performance with the most sensitive IMs at my disposal. All the newest digital tonal converters, and this one is simply a no exception, are already breaking the boundaries in terms of measurements. Uh, especially when it comes to blocking out the mains noise. I still remember testing a multi-thousand DAC a few years ago that was simply a mess at high listening volumes and was simply unlistenable with uh, very sensitive IEMs or with portable headphones. But you should know that technology is moving forward. Our expectations are higher by the day, even from such affordable devices like this one. But I'm pretty sure that uh, the oversized and linear and regulated power supply in this one, plus those uh, four voltage regulators, uh, left its last words exactly in here. Because as much as I have stressed my hearing abilities, I simply cannot spot any nasty noises uh, that will ruin my listening pleasure. As for the transit response, my, my favorite part, you should know that usually oversampling and Delta Sigma DACs like this ones are absolute rulers in terms of speed and impact. I'm yet to find a speedier sounding unit than that uh, Matrix Audio Element X and Gustard A22. Uh, you should know that transit response is basically can be split in two parts. So the speed of all the notes that are coming towards you and the slam that will follow. For a great slam, you need simply a powerful output stage and uh, for a faster pace, you need a less complicated circuitry. On very rare occasions, I can spot an amazing speed and slam in the same device, but it's usually one or the other. For example, uh, Audio GD R7 2020 edition, that r 2 DAC, it was still undefeated when it comes to punch, when it comes to slam, but you should know that its output stage, it resembles a lot more uh, that of a power amplifier than that of a DAC, with more than 12 output transistors with tens of fat capacitors to store all that power, it was really a heavyweight heater, but it was moving its feet like a grandma. Uh, it was decreasing the speed of those nodes quite a lot. Gustard A18 is mostly a speeder than a hard puncher. Uh, yet, if you are adding some punch amplifiers afterwards, you can counterbalance the weaker slam that it has. For example, that Benchmark HP4 and the Kinky Studio EXM7 uh, worked wonders in both of my setups. <laughs> Moving on to the sound stage and depth, there is one unspoken rule that says uh, all AKM based DACs, especially those carrying flagship uh, chipsets, are sounding airier and much bigger compared to rest of the oversampling DACs like uh, ESA Saber ones that are mostly fast sounding and uh, closed in by comparison. And I've certainly experienced uh, this myself uh, in many devices, but uh, there are very few ones that are not following this rule. Uh, take both Gustard units as very good examples. So this one is both uh, wide sounding, so has very nice soundstage size, but it also faster sounding compared to the likes of Topping D90, for example. So Gustard simply understands the limitations that were put in place by those chipsets and somehow managed to solve uh, some of them at about 140 bucks cheaper to the Topping D90. Uh, this one sounds exactly as open, exactly as wide sounding, and the only limitations will be put in place by your recordings, by your amplifiers, by your speakers, and by your headphones. In terms of transparency and resolution, I'm still spotting all the smallest nuances in my music. Uh, all those mastering errors were heard loud and clear. I can still hear those micro details uh, in the most unusual places in my music. 
So Benchmark HPA4 still works as a big magnifying glass for any digital source. And I feel like I can see through them and spot all their weaknesses and all their pros, all their strong points. And uh, to me, A18 sounded like a very transparent unit. It was a very resolving unit and I can easily compare it with uh, more expensive devices. I was quite surprised when the little Gustard showed such a high level of transparency and detail. And in this regard, it sounded exactly like a topping D90 and just by a hair behind that flagship uh, Matrix Audio Element X, which came as a shock to me. As for the frequency response, I left uh, small traces, very small impressions about it. So this one is a brutally honest source and if you are not searching for the truth in your recordings, you might want to search for something else. Uh, its base performance uh, is simply one of the best rates. I'm yet to hear of flagship AKM designs that is not impressive in terms of base. So be it Fio M15, be it Topping D90, Gustard A22, A18, they all performed really, really nice in terms of base. So it's again, it's one of the strongest points of this one for sure. So be it sub bass, be it mid bass, it was always uh, strong. It was going deep. It was always controlled. Um, it will not linger too much. That, that is very impressive. So it's both a fast sounding bass and also a hard hitting type of bass that can be filled with absolutely anything that is connected to this one. There is a second unspoken rule that all flagship AKM based DAX uh, should basically be champions in terms of mid-range presence, in terms of mid-range density, meat to the bone, uh, warmth and smoothness. And this is exactly where Gustard is not following any rules and is simply altering the voicing of their devices. So instead of going the smooth and warm route, uh, A18 is sounding mostly linear uh, with just a small, small hint of warmth and smoothness. So it sounds natural too, but uh, not a lot of soul can be found in this one. So A18 is an honest sounding source and uh, it will not beautify your songs, so to speak. If you need a little bit more mid-range presence and uh, a little bit more soul, you should probably look elsewhere. But I want to clarify that A18 is not dry sounding, is not soulless sounding uh, at all. It doesn't have a V-shaped frequency response. Just a straight line from the sub bass to the upper treble. And this is exactly how all digital sources should, should sound. As for the treble, this is an easy one because it felt simply very textured in this region, uh, very extended. Uh, everything is there to hear in this region can be heard loud and clear. Its bigger brother, A22, was even more extended in this region. Uh, it's shown an additional layer of information with, which was a small problem with few particular hi-fi setups. But A18 is less piercing than its bigger brother, so it's a bit calmer up top. And it will be easier to integrate in linear sounding hi-fi setups because there is simply less brightness, less itching in the treble. The snare drum crashes, for example, felt visceral and ringing for a microsecond longer than usual. Uh, cymbals were super defined too, but uh, they didn't bother me long term. As for its wireless performance, I have um, experienced that uh, Qualcomm CSR 8675 multiple times already, uh, be it portable or desktop devices. And this one is working exactly like those, so not, not much of a difference. I connected my smartphone, which is LDAC enabled and also Bluetooth 5.0 compatible to this one. And I also have a Tidal Hi-Fi subscription. I connected those two when I started walking through the apartment. And no matter how much I've tried, the signal would always stay very strong, even with two or three concrete walls between us. Only when I was at the balcony, I was uh, losing the signal and there was a little bit of stuttering in my music. But at about 15 meters away, with uh, about four concrete walls between us, that is really normal behavior because all other units uh, basically did the same. It can't be considered as a full-fledged streamer because it still loses bits of information. But at the same time, remember the price point of this unit. There are full-featured Wi-Fi and Ethernet streamers on the market that are not doing anything else, but still costing four to six times the price of the unit I'm testing today. I also compared this one with the topping D90 that you can see below. So these units are simply competing against each other. But since I don't want to make this video super long or boring, please check out my detailed comparison in the written review that I put below. It's one click away, so please check that out. As for the conclusion, this will be a very easy one. So uh, A18 is simply built like a tank. It offers an extended frequency response. 
uh, without any dips or rises in a very clean and transparent way. Background noise was always in check and I didn't spot it even with uh, very sensitive loads as IEMs. Soundstage was always a big, airy, decompressed, exactly how its bigger brother A22 sounded. A18 also performed really well in a loudspeaker setup working as a DAC plus preamp combo. And I didn't feel that uh, a separate preamp would improve much in this setup. Now considering that it's more or less on the same level with the topping D90, I'm very pleased to recommend the Gustard A18 as a great performer with an outstanding value. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. My full in-depth review is waiting on my website. In case you want to support this channel, please subscribe to it and thank you for doing that. And as usual, listen to my music, be positive, and I'll see you soon. Cheers guys, bye bye.